So this video is looking at how we can rearrange equations by using the triangle method. Now there was another video on rearranging equations from first principles using pure mathematics. This method is going to um, be a simplification that will allow you for a GCSE level to calculate the rearranged equations easily and simply. Now there are a couple of rules you need to remember with this method. If we take an example of an equation that you'll get given in your exam, such as speed. Speed will be written in your exam as speed is equal to distance divided by time. And in your exam paper, you will get given it in that form in words. So we need to get familiar with converting the words into symbols. So speed is s, which is equal to distance, which is d, divided by time. Now, if I want to convert that to a triangle, all I need to remember is that if I have a two quantities which are divided by, I put the numerator at the top of the triangle. So, I start my triangle and I will have a line going across the middle and a line going down. So, I will always put my numerator at the top and my denominator at the bottom and then I put speed here. Now, this line here means divided by and this line at the bottom means multiplied. So if I want to calculate speed, which we know is this equation, distance divided by time, what I do is I cover speed, and the triangle tells me it's distance divided by time. If I want to work out distance, I cover distance, and the triangle tells me that that is speed multiplied by time. So the equation for distance is speed multiplied by time. And if I want to work out time, I cover that, and the triangle shows me that it's distance divided by speed. So time is equal to distance divided by speed. So I now have three equations to calculate speed or distance or time. And the important thing to recognise is the fact that there is only one thing on one side of the equation. So that is the subject of the equation, what we are calculating. So we're calculating in this one speed, in this one distance and in this one time. Let's have a look at an example which isn't one number divided by another. So this equation is Newton's second law. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. And again, that is how you will get it in your exam paper as words. So we can convert that to symbols as force is F, and it's a capital F. Mass is little m, and A is lowercase a. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, if you get an equation given to you where you have two quantities which are multiplied, then the multiplied goes on the bottom of our triangle. So if we draw our triangle this time, the multiplied always goes along the bottom, so it's going to be mass multiplied by acceleration, so force is going to go to the top. So if I want to calculate the mass, I can cover mass, and that will be force divided by acceleration. If I want to work out acceleration, I cover acceleration, so it's force divided by mass. Remember that this isn't a substitute for still putting in the, your answers in numbers in the correct unit, so you still have to put force in newtons and mass in kilograms in order to get the right answer. Let's have a look at an equation that has more than three things in it. So this equation, for the energy transfer to a material by heating, this is the equation for specific heat capacity, has four quantities. Energy is equal to mass multiplied by specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. So if we convert that to symbols, energy is capital E, mass is M, specific heat capacity is a lower case C, and that is multiplied by a change in temperature. Now this symbol here, this triangle, is delta. And that is the symbol we use to represent a change in. So don't put the temperature as 25 degrees. Put the temperature as whatever the difference is. So if it goes from uh, 10 degrees up to 25, the change is 15 degrees. So it's the change in temperature that is important in this equation. So we can still put this into a triangle. The only thing we need to do is just we need to add extra space at the bottom of our triangle. So we know that if we've got two numbers multiplied by each other, or two quantities, we put that at the bottom of our triangle. So we still do that 
even if we've got three things. So we have our line going across the middle. Now we just divide the bottom of the triangle into three sections. Mass multiplied by specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. And energy goes on the top. So energy is equal to mass multiplied by specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. If I want to rearrange it so I've got mass, I cover mass. So mass would be equal to energy divided by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. If I want to work out specific heat capacity, I cover that. And I can now see that it's energy divided by mass multiplied by the change in temperature. And the last one, change in temperature, I cover that. I can see that the change in temperature is equal to energy divided by mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity. So I've now got four equations from the triangle to calculate each of the individual quantities. Let's have a look at another example of how we can relate that to kinetic energy. Now kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. So that's either 0.5 times the mass times the velocity squared, or the whole thing divided by 2. Now, we can write that equation as the whole thing divided by 2, which is the half, or we can write that equation as 0.5 multiplied by the mass multiplied by velocity squared. Those two equations are equal. So, because we now have three things multiplied by each other, we can now put that into a triangle with three quantities along the base. So 0.5, the mass and velocity squared, and energy at the top. So now our equation for energy is equal to 0.5 multiplied by mass multiplied by velocity squared, which is the equation we have here. If you want to work out the mass, you cover the mass, and I can see that it's energy divided by 0.5 times the velocity squared. And if I want velocity squared, then I can see that velocity squared is equal to energy divided by 0.5 times the mass. Now, there is still one problem with this equation, which is the fact that we have velocity squared as opposed to velocity. So you need to remember that if you are calculating velocity, your final step is that velocity is equal to the square root of E divided by 0.5 multiplied by the mass. So in order to remove the squared function, we do the opposite, which is square root. If you've watched the other video on rearranging, you'll see that the equation we found for mass there was subtly different. The equation we had for mass there was equal to 2e divided by v squared. It's important to remember that multiplying e by 2 or multiplying v squared, which is at the bottom, by 0.5 are the same thing. They are equal. So I can either multiply, in this case, everything by 2, or I can divide everything by 0.5. The reason for that is that 2 is equal to 1 over 0.5. So those two quantities are interchangeable. So whichever method you've chosen to use, the triangle method or the rearrangement from first principles, and just stick to whatever number that you come out with for that answer and it will still be correct.